Hello, everyone, and welcome today. It's a pleasure to be here with you. My name is Lisa Bevel, and we are going to be talking about high performance for your MBA. So I look forward to hearing from you. This is a very active and participative workshop. Uh, I'll give you a quick intro, and then we'll jump right in. So a little bit about me, my background is in graduate management education with a very strong focus on positive leadership. I have my MBA from IE Business School some time ago and an executive master in positive leadership strategy and transformation. All of my work has really come together to help individuals be their best. And I love what I do and I love being able to share my knowledge with everyone. Uh, and I hope we can really advance today and get started on this a uh, high performance mindset and creating new practices for you as you prepare for your MBA. So first of all, congratulations. I'm sure you had some really big celebrations when you got your, your admission letter. And this is uh, an important journey, the MBA. So we'll be talking about that. But I just wanted to start by saying congratulations. You're on your way. And I would love to hear about from you. Where are you going? And when do you start? So if you could use uh, either the chat or the question. Uh, I typically use the chat. However, for questions, maybe we can do question and answer. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you. So let me know. And if you are still in the application process, let me know where you're applying to and when you expect to start your MBA. Please do share. Starting in September, great, congratulations. Where are you going? IMD. Okay, someone, so Becky, where are you going? And Bavli, fantastic, IMD, starting in January. Okay, great, Becky, fantastic. It's going to IE in Madrid. Uh, and a couple more of you, go ahead and share. All right, so at the moment we have European business schools. We have IMD, LBS, IE. Okay, good to know, short listing. So hopefully uh, you can get some ideas here from your, your fellow colleagues who've gone through the admission process. It is a process of self-discovery and clarification, and it's the beginning of your MBA journey. Oftentimes, we don't consider it as part of the MBA journey. Okay, great. All right, so thank you for sharing. I, I look forward to hearing more from you as we carry on, and please use the question and answer uh, for any questions. Jump in. Uh, I'd be happy to hear from you. So how ready do you feel for your MBA? For those of you who are starting this fall or in January, uh, how do you feel in terms of your preparedness for the MBA? And for those of you who are still applying, how do you feel in terms of your preparedness for the application process, which is quite rigorous? Okay, a clear not ready. All right, what do you feel not ready about? So what I have found in my work with professionals looking to join MBA programs or just uh, MBA graduates, I've, I've worked with many different people across the globe, uh, is that we often don't uh, feel ready and don't put the time to think about what does that mean. And so this is where uh, the high performance bootcamp comes from, creating the time to through guided uh, process, think about what it means to be ready and how to prime ourselves to be ready and, and flourish. Okay. Great, so oftentimes we have a plan and we have that vision, yet we don't know how to make it happen. And the day-to-day -day can get a little bit overwhelming, especially in this pandemic time when everything seems to be changing and we're shifting gears constantly. So recognizing that that's quite normal and considering ways that we can help ourselves to create practices that are gonna help us to be our best is what we're going to be focusing on.
So I want to share with you uh, a framework that I use in all of the work that I do. So my work is, is around positive leadership and helping individuals be positive leaders. There are four elements that are critical and I will share them and they're built into absolutely everything that I do. Number one is ownership. Oftentimes we take a more passive approach. Uh, we let the, the busyness of the day to day, the, the busyness of our work get in the way uh, of really deciding how we want to be and where we want to go and where we're going to spend our time and attention. And so recognizing that is critical as a first step. Second is positive emotions. Now, I've done a lot of work around positive emotions. Uh, I've had the fortune to study with Barbara Fredrickson, who actually studied the utility of positive emotions and the importance of positive emotions in all that we do. So we will consider ways to build and cultivate positive emotions that will help us to uh, flourish through resilience, uh, through connection, uh, through pro-social behaviors. And by doing so, that'll help us to then uh, evaluate where we're spending our time and create positive habits that are going to help us to be our best. When we are coming in a good place, taking ownership and, and having a, a positive outlook, we can focus on others, which is critical for leadership. Oftentimes when we're talking leadership, we want to focus on ourselves and we do need to start with ourselves. yet we need to quickly shift to that focus on others and have a balance, but recognize that when we're leading, it's who we're, we're interacting with, it's really critical. And finally, authentic communication. When we are coming from a good place and we are able to see others and really hear others, we're able to communicate more effectively. So these elements are brought into everything that I do, and I just wanted to share them with you. If you're interested, let me know, and we can talk further about any one of these elements. So in a, thinking about ownership, what we're going to do is focus on our area of control. Now, oftentimes, this pandemic has really brought up a lot of areas of concern that are out of our area of control or influence. And there, we just need to focus on acceptance. Uh, but what we're going to do today is really consider what is in our area of control and how can we focus in, hone our attention in there so that we can be our best. So I encourage you today to take notes. I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions. Oftentimes we want the answers and we go into an MBA saying, tell me the answers, tell me what I need to do uh, to be better. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It's actually a lot of questions, the right questions that will help guide you in terms of your reflection, thinking about uh, what is important to you and the science behind uh, how we work so that then you can put those together and focus on what's really important to you. But you are the center of this model. Just as at any MBA program, you will be the center. Uh, you will get out of it what you put into it. So I encourage you to have space to write these things down, take notes, because the information today and the experience in the MBA are going to be unique to each and every one of you. And it's important to recognize that and to really take ownership for cultivating the experience that you want to have. Part of that is out of our control, of course, uh, yet a greater portion of it is within our control or our influence, and we often don't realize that. And that's what we're going to focus on. So, after ownership comes positive emotions. One really great way to cultivate positive emotions is to uh, think about what you're grateful for. There are a lot of practices around gratitude. Gratitude is one of my strengths, and so it comes naturally to me. And so I'll start off, but I want you to think about what it is you're grateful for. For me, I'm grateful to be here with you today and to be able to have this conversation about High Performance Bootcamp, to build the awareness around elements and practices that are going to help you to be your best. I'm also grateful for this wonderful weather and for being in summer, uh, a season that I absolutely love. So if you could share, thank you. Grateful for living in a safe country. Anyone else want to share what you're grateful for? Oftentimes we take many things for granted. We can be grateful for our health, grateful for the support from friends and family. Fantastic. Grateful to get into the MBA in a really competitive year. 
Fantastic. I agree. Congratulations. It has been a tremendously competitive year. We have seen it from Europe, from the United States. Uh, it's been very competitive. So to get in and to a school that you are really excited to, about going to is uh, something to be grateful for and uh, a great accomplishment. The ability to fulfill your dreams. And once we start going, oftentimes we're out of practice about stopping and recognizing what we're grateful for, but it's, a, it's an excellent exercise. I encourage you to do it. There's many different ways around it. So you could sit down and brainstorm about all the things you're grateful for, small to big, big to small, or you can take time each and every day, maybe in the morning when you first wake up or at the end of the day to think about what you're grateful for. And it can really set you off uh, on the right path, putting on a positive lens to how you see things. Great health, good job, an employer, an opportunity to pursue your aspirations. Thank you. So already when we start talking about what we're grateful for and putting on that lens, the world doesn't seem as daunting. A moment ago it was, are you ready? And the feeling was, I'm not ready. I'm definitely not ready. I have so much to do. I'm trying to balance work and deciding on a school. Yet when we take a moment to pause and, and think about what we're grateful for, we actually have uh, can calm some of those nerves and feel more motivated to, to carry forward. So the next thing I'd like to do, regardless of your emotions, sometimes those overwhelming emotions, that anxiety, those nerves can take over. And sometimes that excitement can also take over. What we can do and is in our practice is to just take a deep breath and it will allow us to embrace the emotions we feel and tell our bodies to calm down and really sit into that moment. So let's just take one moment to sit up straight not many of you have your cameras on, so I'm not seeing you. No one sees you, but try this with me. Sit up straight, close your eyes. We're gonna take a deep breath in our nose and a very long exhale out our mouth. Ready? Take a deep breath in. And a long exhale. And one more, all the way into your belly. And a deep exhale. Now, how do you feel? Do you sense any change from a moment ago? So I do this in most of my classes. I, I teach at IE as, as well as being a director at Fortuna. Uh, and I have my own coaching clients and training programs. And oftentimes we underestimate the value of breath and how we, it can help us to really calm and focus. So let's carry on in this space and talk about your journey. What we want to do is to recognize that this is a journey. We often have a performance mindset where it's the, the milestones, the accomplishments. Yet fail to realize that this is a longer journey. So the admissions process is part of the journey where you do have important milestones. The MBA, there are really important milestones, uh, yet these all form a part of a greater journey of life, building together. And if we can take a step back and see this as a longer term journey, it can really help us to take ownership for the journey and say, how do I want to create this experience? And what we want to do is to consider specifically what is success to you? That means something very different to each and every one of us. And we want to set our intentions and move towards that definition of success. So I want to hear from you. What did you learn from the admissions process? For those of you who are just starting, tell me, <laughs> what, are, what are your greatest barriers? But you had to go through a school selection and prepare for the GMAT. Consider what is your story? How can you share your experience? And really uh, clarify what it is you're, you're looking to do. So what did you learn from that process? For those of you, of course, Fortuna clients, uh, you've probably seen the, the admissions process as a real moment of discovery and clarification. 
recognizing what has shaped you, what is important to you, why you want to focus on the MBA right now in your career, and what you hope to achieve with that MBA. Does anybody want to share what you learned? So I encourage you, my question to all my students and clients is about the learning. What did you learn? Uh, we often don't take the time to reflect on the experiences that we have. And you just went through a really important experience of the admissions process. So considering what, what you, you can gain from that, how you solidified a foundation uh, can really help us as we transition into the MBA. Okay, so a really important uh, focus on fit. Yes, we all tend to go right to the rankings and think that the top school is the best school and that's the best school for me. Yet all of the top schools uh, are going to be excellent in terms of their education, their experience. And what's important is to consider what you want to get out of the MBA. So that's taking ownership and recognizing that the experience is going to be different for each and every person, and which is the school that's going to help you to be your best. Great, thank you for sharing. Finding your why, yes, that's an important one. Uh, really considering what motivates you, what are your values? We'll talk about that in a moment because we often want to do go to the to-do. This is, a, again, we want people to tell us, what do I need to do uh, to get it right? And it doesn't work that way. Uh, lots of people can tell you what to do, but the important thing is to facilitate what is important for you and consider a path forward together. Great, thank you. All right, so some of you said you're not quite ready. Uh, what are you doing to prepare for the MBA? You put a lot of time and effort into the application process and you're going to be investing a significant amount of time resources, financial, energy in the MBA. What are you doing to prepare for that? Have you thought about this question? Because oftentimes we see uh, an admission and we say, done, I got it, I'm in. All right, and then what do we focus on? The logistics, getting ready to move to a new country, housekeeping, finances, resources planning, yes. All very important things. But what are you doing to prepare yourself as a leader? Making the most of time with friends and family, that's great. How can we put intention to all of those elements that you're doing to prepare? Okay, getting in touch with people, establishing a network, excellent. So there are two elements we need to play with. It's going, looking back and looking forward. So when we look back, we often say, what went wrong and how can I fix it? How can we shift that mindset to what did I learn? And what did I learn that's going to help me moving forward? So that's number one, it's really important. And then two, how can we continue to challenge ourselves looking forward? So considering that I'm on this journey, and I'm moving forward, what do I need to do to prepare myself for the next chapter of the journey? And so a lot of you talked about um, the three elements that come there. One is what you're saying goodbye to, what you're uh, stepping away from. I don't want to say leaving behind, but just stepping away from because you're moving to a different place. Then the second is the transition. There's a lot of logistics around that. What do you need to do to get there? And the third is looking forward, proactively taking ownership, what can I do to better prepare myself for when I'm actually there, right? So um, establishing your network, that is great. Taking ownership within uh, of tasks within your work team, okay? Fantastic. So in your work team, your working team or in your MBA team? That's a good question, but looking forward. So the MBA is typically a dream, a dream of so many. And what I want to work together on is making that dream come true. We often don't think about uh, crafting the MBA experience. We think this is my dream, I've made it, I'm going. Yet, what are we doing to make that experience the absolute best? How can we continue to create a mindset of learning and take proactive approach to crafting the experience we want to have? So this course is about training. 
a boot camp comes from that physical activity. It's about training and it's training the skills and the mindset to be able to maximize the experience and make that dream a reality. So a great uh, few questions on values from Susan David on emotional agility. And I think she summarized these, uh, what's really important quite well. So deep down, what is it that you want? And I think it's an important question that oftentimes uh, we don't ask. What really matters to you? And this has to do with what some of you mentioned before about fit with the MBA program. It's an MBA is an opportunity and experience, yet there are so many ways we can go about it. So what really matters to you? And what are the relationships that you're investing in? So some of you said those friends and family, and some of you said looking forward, I'm already working on creating my network. So what do you want your life to be about? We can talk about that in terms of the MBA. What do you want your MBA to be about as part of that bigger life scheme? And considering what makes me feel most alive, I, we can talk a lot about strengths and considering what, what are the activities that really enrich your life, that, that motivate you, and how we can put our attention there. And this last one, I, I, I really enjoy. If all of my stress were gone, all of those uh, worries of maybe the finances, of am I good enough, uh, do I have what it takes, those types of questions, what new things would I pursue? So if you didn't have any cares in the world, where would you focus your attention? And that can help to guide us. So these are some questions to get us started. And I want you to just reflect for a moment and jot down a couple of answers. They require far more in-depth uh, introspection and reflection. We don't have that time today, but it, these are some questions to get you started. So what matters deep down to you and that's a really difficult question to answer, yet it's fundamental for us to create our vision. If we're not sure what really matters, we are going to get caught up in the busy day to day. So what matters to you? What matters to me are people and the relationships. And so prioritizing people and the time that I take to really connect with others is for me the most important. Otherwise, I can get caught up in the day-to-day -day and, and that can take over. So the next step is crafting our vision. I want us to take time to step back and really look out in the horizon and think, you've probably done this for your MBA applications, what is it that you want in life? What is your short-term career goal and your long-term career goal? Uh, those are the typical questions for the MBA applications. I want us to take an even further step back and consider that on a life. Uh, life, not only career, but life. What do we want in life? And how do we want to, how do we envision our life in the future? So the MBA is a, is a part of this. You've probably selected a European school because you feel that that's going to have an impact on your experience and what you gain. Um, but take a step back and say, what is your vision for life? And I hope you're jotting these down because this is a guide through uh, a way to high performance. And now I want you to hone in on the MBA and say, what is your vision for graduation? How do you want to feel on graduation day? And also, what do you want to be known for? Often we don't think of things that way. We don't put the ownership into uh, considering and crafting how we go about the MBA. You have a great time uh, ahead of you to really craft those, that experience, create your network uh, to develop your skills. Do you want to be known for the person who is always learning? Do you want to be known as the reliable person who can be counted on? Do you want to be known as uh, the leader who is able to source the best ideas from the team, the go-to person? And if that's the case, then consider how you can go about crafting that that brand, those skills. Next, I want you to consider what are your strengths? What are the strengths that are going to help you reach that vision? Are you, do you naturally have empathy, which will allow you to connect with others? Do you naturally have drive that allows you to push projects forward and rally troops behind a vision? And if you think back, when are you at your best?
So critical questions that are going to help us as we move forward. And how can we build these all into your vision of leadership? You will have an opportunity during the MBA program to focus on leadership skills. The MBA program will be extremely intense. And oftentimes we lose sight of all of these important questions that are going to help us to, to stay true to our path. So taking a step uh, back in advance and putting intention will help to guide us and consider where we want to focus our attention. So as you're in your MBA, how do you see yourself as a leader? And how can you test that, those abilities out? Because each and every person has a ripple effect. So I want you to consider when we're at our best, what is the ripple effect we have on others? All right, so do we have that clear vision of, of what we want in life and of what, how we want to feel at graduation? And who we want to be as a leader, what we want to be known for. And now you might say, all right, that's what I want, but I'm not there yet. Well, how are we going to design the path forward? And that's what this course is about, taking the time to guide you through those big questions and then consider how we're going to create that path forward. So first of all, we need to map out our success. We need to clarify what we stand for and build that confidence in that journey. So part of that is the vision that we've already gone through, but we need to really define what that means. If we don't have a, a, a plan, we are going to fall into what is just the day-to-day. -day. You have an excellent program ahead of you. Of course, you're going to have a great experience. Yet, how can we take the time to put intention into what we're doing so that the development skills are really what we want? So that we're creating the habits out of development, out of learning, out of connection, and out of being on our path and making sure we're continuing on our path. So mapping our success is a critical first step that we often don't do. We know we're just ready for the MBA and we're going to get there. And we've, we talk logistics and we know the first day of class, but what are you doing to prepare yourself as a leader? And that's where we want to focus. Uh, then a lot of research has shown about time, attention, and habits. We want to take ownership of our time because during the MBA program, you have a limited amount of time. That's true for every one of us every single day. However, during the MBA, you have so many different opportunities to network, to learn, to explore the city, to live the culture, uh, to work in teams, uh, to sleep. <laughs> of course, it's an important element. And we want to make sure that we are priming ourselves to have the most efficient time that's going to help us to manage our energy and make the most of the experience. We don't often consider energy management. We don't often consider resilience. What are we doing to build our resilience? Because you're going to have stressful moments. How are you going to ensure that you get through the MBA program well, maximizing each, each experience, staying true to your path of, to success, staying true to your goal and vision of leadership? So identifying how you want to arrive to graduation is critical because then we need to design that path forward. and. Consider where we're spending our time. There's a lot of science around attention and habits. So we would consider where you're putting your attention and how you can create habits that are going to help you to be your best. Oftentimes we don't consider this. We don't, we, we, we stop exercising. I've seen this time and time again for MBA students, stopping to exercise, little sleep, drinking more coffee, eating sugar. And as the program advances, they're feeling worse. They're feeling further and further behind, and they don't know how to get out of it. So taking time in advance before the MBA to really set up some positive, productive, and healthy habits that are going to help you to manage your energy and to build resilience so that you can continue to lead and be a dynamic leader in your team is critical. How many of you have a healthy relationship with your mobile phone? So we all have phones, smartphones. How many of you feel that you have a healthy relationship? <laughs> so none of us. Great. Well, so here's a really good learning. No matter where we are, we can always get a little bit better. And that's part of the learning of this course. No matter where you are, you've been admitted to an MBA program, a top school. You are 
part of an elite group who are moving forward. Excellent. Yet, how can we be just that much better? How can we take a step back to reflect and create our vision and then recognize where we're putting our time and attention has an impact? So I too know all the science and still have my challenges around the phone. My biggest one is uh, limiting screen time right before going to bed. That's the challenge I work on. But it, there's a lot to do in, in priming ourselves for the relationship we have with technology and leveraging technology to help us to be our best rather than letting it take over. And then finally, we some of you mentioned friends and family, networking. Connection and communication are extremely important for resilience, for our well being. And we often focus so much in an MBA on the technical rather than focusing on the people. And shifting that mindset to focus on the people is an excellent one. Yet, how can we create deeper relationships? How can we develop our communication? So, in bootcamp, we'll consider. What is our own particular style? How do others defer in them? How can we leverage diversity and commit to creating deep and positive relationships? And then finally, in building resilience, uh, oftentimes we can for a short term, but we don't have the long-term stamina. So how we continue to build resilience and recognize that the year ahead is going to be a challenging one. Any MBA program is extremely intense and we want to be our best, not only from the first day, but maintain that, that ability throughout. So how can we set up the systems that are gonna allow us to uh, continue with resilience and measure that we're on track? Any questions before we go on? Have you been taking notes? Of these four areas, which is the most challenging for you? Mapping your success, taking time of your, taking ownership of your time and attention, connection and communication, and ensuring you're at your best. Where do you feel is the most challenging for you? Taking ownership of our time. Tracking progress is a challenge. Okay. And as we can see, they're all interrelated. Oftentimes we focus right in on time. This I've seen with a lot of my students and clients. I want to be better, so let me focus on time. And the first thing we do is we get out a to-do list. Yet we don't take the time to invest in that big step backward and saying, what does success look like? If we don't have that clear, we're never going to have enough time because we don't really know where we're going. Then recognizing once we have that vision that we can take ownership and build towards it, recognizing the journey, the long-term uh, takes practice and it's hard. And that's where the science of attention and behavior uh, habits comes into play. And only then when we take stock of where we're going, and where our time is, can we measure? Because without that intention uh, and focus and practice, we're not able to really measure. The, as you've noticed, even so much more this year, last year and a half, time seems to be flying by. All of a sudden we'll say, wait, we're in July already. Wait, I wanted to apply. Round one applications are due in September. The MBA is starting in September already. So uh, being able to craft that vision, hone in on where we're, we're placing our attention, invest our time, and then track and measure is critical. So after this, these questions, I want to ask you, uh, where are you setting your attention? So attention and intention. So what can you do, Becky, to take ownership of your time? What would be your first point of an action plan? I'll show you. Schedule healthy and well-being centered activities into my day. Great. 
Absolutely. Taking ownership of our time. So let me make that connection. Taking ownership of our time and saying, I have ownership of my time and I feel that my health is important. So I am going to schedule that into my day today. Absolutely. Often we don't make that connection and we don't make the connection to our health and well being as fundamental to our ability to connect, to lead, uh, to think critically, to make decisions. Fantastic. Can you commit to that today, Becky? Okay, some others. Okay, great. Absolutely, said Becky. So the first step is awareness. The next step is action. Uh, so recognizing what is important to you and then taking action. It doesn't have to be uh, that we're going to start training for a marathon today, let's say, uh, but putting today some focused attention into activities that are going to promote our health and well-being is fundamental for Becky, and she's going to start today. Fantastic. Reducing mobile and cell phone distractions. Okay, that's a really good one. Just a tip for you guys. Oftentimes we turn our phone upside down and we have it right there next to us. Research has shown that that is still capturing our attention. And we every time we look at the phone, it distracts us from what we're trying to do. It takes us away from that really deep work. And the deep work is critical for an MBA to really solidify the learning and apply it. The application is what's critical. You're going to learn the technical skills, but how do you apply it? And that requires deep thinking. If we are constantly being distracted, it's going to challenge our ability to think deeply. So what happens? We are not able to get in that thinking. We don't feel satisfied with what we're doing. We get frustrated. And what happens? We give into that frustration. We pick up the phone and we look at social media, say, I'll come back to this later. I have time. Procrastination is one of the biggest challenges for the MBA students I work with. The feeling of this project is so big and it's so important and we have so many distractions. Let me just put it off to later. The problem is that project keeps getting bigger and bigger and we're not breaking it down. So, and then after time that becomes a habit. We, we, we let's say crash study, crash prepare all night. We get it in by the deadline. Yes, we get something in, but is it our optimal outcome? No. And then after that experience, we're absolutely exhausted because we've given so much at the very end. So how can we manage our energy in a different way uh, through productive habits that are going to help us to be our best? So the steps forward, what I want you to consider are... Um, how you can consider high performance as a mindset, how you can consider this as a development. Really take time to define your vision. And this is challenging. I work with a lot of people in defining vision because we can uh, have trouble looking forward. We often are looking back and considering what went wrong, how do I fix it, but not taking the time to proactively think, what do I want? What do I want in the future? What matters to me? And how can I shape that vision so that then I can design a path forward. Then we want to set our intention and decide on where we're investing our time and how we can sharpen our focus so that we are managing our energy and putting positive and productive habits into place, setting those new behaviors, creating change that's going to really help us to be at our best and commit to making that happen, commit to being the person that we want to be, the person we see in that vision. Any questions? All right. So in the high performance boot camp today was just a, a sneak peek asking a lot of questions to help you to reflect, to build awareness, to recognize that behavioral change needs to happen and is possible, that it can be trained and it can be motivating. Uh, I set forward a, a very quick path on how to help yourself create high performance mindset development habits. And if you're interested, uh, I encourage you to join the high performance bootcamp for your MBA. It will be in August, all of August, and we will go in depth into these different areas, the four areas that we've covered today, mapping your success, taking ownership of your time and attention, connecting, communicating, and committing to being your best self. 
So I have a question about sharing the slides. Unfortunately, I can't share the slides today. The recording will be made available by Fortuna Admission. So I encourage you to go back to the recording if you'd like. And I encourage you to consider uh, looking uh, into the bootcamp uh, for those wanting to create high performance habits, wanting to consider in depth what you would like to do, your vision, and how to get there. Um, so by the end of the course, we will be able to do go so much more in depth and create your own high performance action plan, clearly define your values and your vision, uh, dig deep into the science of habit and attention, and gain critical insights into your own communication style, the style of others, cultivating confidence in your abilities as a leader. So here is the information about the course. If you're interested in, in joining, uh, you can enroll at positiveleader.thinkific.com. And the course has uh, a lot of individual exercises. And then each week we will have a two hour workshop for knowledge training, uh, going into depth on the exercises that you've completed, uh, really honing in and crafting your plan. Uh, there will be two individual coaching sessions for each person during the month of August. We will debrief the Everything Disc Workplace Assessment as part of your learning of this course in the Connection and Communication. And your final deliverable will be your High Performance Action Plan, which we'll be presenting to the cohort. All very fast, intense, priming you for your MBA starting in September or January. So I encourage you to have a look at the course and consider if it's right for you. I encourage you to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, and I encourage you to consider reflecting on how you're preparing for the MBA, what you can do to really prime yourself to make the most of the experience. And with that, I will open up the floor to any general questions you might have. I'm happy to answer them. Just a quick reminder that we are recording. So to keep that in mind in terms of the, the types of questions you have, feel free to jump in, uh, ask your questions. You can write in the question and answer or also in the chat. And I appreciate your time today and your reflection on some of these big questions, which are actually quite difficult to answer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Becky. I really appreciate your engagement and your comments. Sounds like you're on the right path. I encourage you to take some of these questions away and think further on them. Any other questions? For those of you who are starting your MBAs, I encourage you to, to really reflect and prepare yourself because this is a very exciting part of the journey, your life journey, and it will go by quickly. Once you start the MBA, there is no looking back. So taking the time to prepare in advance is critical. So I have a question here about the coaching sessions. Uh, my work in, in leadership development is focused around training and around coaching. So in terms of coaching, I work with individuals in their leadership development. Uh, and I felt that this was a very important part of this course to be able to work through some of the, the exercises to be a part of the cohort and share in the, the workshop sessions, but also have the time to have a one-on-one -on -one to discuss some of your biggest challenges, ways to clarify. Uh, and so for me, the, the coaching sessions are a fundamental part of the course. Any other questions?
So the, the course is uh, for people who are starting their MBA. Uh, it, is, it does build on work. Um, so the question is about, is, it, is there a prerequisite to be uh, in an MBA program? Yes, uh, that is a prerequisite uh, to have and to be enrolled in an MBA program because of the work builds on your admissions process. And the admissions process is critical to uh, clarifying your vision uh, to crafting your story, to really building off all of the experience you have to date. And the course, in order to go with the, the speed and the pace uh, for your MBA, we do need to build on that work. Okay. So I encourage you to carry on with your applications. Uh, it's a, a, also a great part of the, the journey, uh, probably a lot more nerves involved in the application process. So I encourage you to take some of those deep breaths to consider gratitude each and every day and to manage your energy uh, because there is so much uncertainty in the admissions process. Uh, I know that's a tough time. Uh, reach out to me if you're interested. We can talk a little bit further during the admissions process. If you're working with Fortuna, you're in great hands because all of the expert coaches and directors understand the process and can help you to uh, put your best story forward. So as for the timing on the workshops, they are set for afternoons, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time for every Thursday in August. It, the High Performance Bootcamp is intense. It requires time each week for the exercises, for reflection, and for practice. Uh, and the two-hour workshops each Thursday uh, are part, a critical part of the course for the learning, to solidify the learning and help you to put new practices into place that are going to help, help you to be your best during the MBA. Any last questions? So it's an exciting time. Uh, we are very close to the fall start of the MBAs. We are very close to round one for those of you who are applying. I know it's an intense time. I encourage you all to take that time to reflect on what is your vision of the future? What is your life vision? And then to design your path forward and to be your best each and every day. Thank you, everyone. I think we will end the webinar now. Again, I encourage you to connect with me, to look at the courses, uh, to consider your own high performance action plan and what it is you'd like to get out of your MBA experience. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.